Okay. Hi, Christine. How are you today? Hi, Michelle. It's so good to see you. So good to see you too. I miss you so much. I can't yeah. tell you. I mean, we do talk almost every day. However, not in person anymore. No. Yes. So friends out there from the Opportunity Knox community, I am delighted to be joined by not only one of my close friends, she's also a partner of mine in one of my many different business adventures that I am involved in. In mm -hmm. addition, she's a managing director at Beauty Counter and she is a goals coach. And frankly, Christine is one of the people that when I have things that I'm going through in my own life, I call upon to ask for guidance and get her direction. And so I'm thrilled that she's here today for a few reasons. One is this lady right here is where Opportunity Knox started, literally. She was the first person that I interviewed for Opportunity Knox. And back then it was alive. And it's come full circle, as we know. You saw Christina Glickman was on a couple of weeks ago. She was one of the first three people I interviewed. Mm -hmm. But really, we started this because Christina and I got nervous during COVID that would women have opportunities? And we wanted to give them opportunities. And so I'm thrilled you're here today. Thanks for coming back around and, um, and being on my podcast. Well, I am thrilled to be here, Michelle. And just piggybacking on what you said, I, I really believe that uh, we are attracted to, our, to certain people. And when you meet certain people like you, and we've known each other for what, almost 15 years, 14, yeah. 14, 15 years, mm -hmm. but, um, our energy just always matches up. And so I'm just so thrilled that you asked me to be here today and just being in your presence and being around your energy always fuels me. And I'm just so happy to have someone like you in my life. And you're bringing so much to so many people through opportunity knocks and through all the, the different avenues that you go down you bring so much to women and to our world so i love watching you grow and i love watching you put your dreams and your visions into action so mm. happy to be here uh, well thank you so much for for saying that and honestly it lands and i feel like uh one of the reasons why we get along so well is that we acknowledge one another we really see each other's strengths and each other's gifts and um and we cheerlead one another toward whatever it is we never really say mm, i don't think you should do that we might provide another angle however we always support each other where we're at and uh that's a real friend and that's a real colleague in my opinion mm -hmm. well i i i consider us fortunate and i consider us um blessed to to have each other and to just to be able to surround ourselves with such incredible women right wow. within all the different people that you've met within opportunity Knox, with all the different businesses that you've been a part of surrounding yourself with those women that feed your soul so i'm happy to be one of them yay and, uh, absolutely so, so so as we do in all of our interviews people love to get insight on other people and how they got to where they are today and you really have a, a you have a theme throughout your background but you have a lot of different things that you've touched on and mm -hmm. i you know because this is a business and wellness community you mm -hmm. actually really embody that so i'd love for you to talk a little bit about your background and how you got to not only being a goals coach but also uh, being a managing director at beauty counter which is not a small feat <laughs> thanks michelle um so yes you are correct i do have an extensive background in health and wellness and working really specifically with women and meeting them where they are and if i look back in my past and where I've met women, it's always been at a similar stage to where, to where I was. And that makes sense. Um, way back when, um, to just, to go, to go quickly, I don't want to get into to too many of the nitty gritties, but, um, I actually went back to school. I got my master's in counseling psychology, and I really wanted to, at that time, focus on what motivates people to work out. Why are people working out? 
Why are people wanting to feel better? What's really driving them? Like the whole psychology behind fitness mm -hmm. and health. I was a, um, a fitness trainer, still am, um, all through graduate school, before graduate school, I ran my first marathon um, during that time and was teaching boot camps. I started a few of my own um, fitness techniques. Um, I had an outdoor women's boot camp. I had my own bar and band class. Um, I just did all different kinds of things, but I went, or all different types of classes, I should say, because I've always been a fitness guru. But I went back, I got my master's in counseling psychology. And at that time, I was also, along with teaching fitness classes, I was working with teenage girls, working with them around body image, self-esteem, um, really looking at how to um, be, be conscious and be, be healthy and treat our bodies well through food and making really conscious decisions around what we're putting in our bodies and how that makes us feel from an early age. So trying to work with girls, you know, at that, at that more vulnerable stage in their teenage years, thinking about body image. Um, and then from there, I ended up meeting my husband ended up getting married, had three boys. During all that time, I was still teaching fitness. I was doing health coaching. I was developing different exercise classes in Los Angeles. I was teaching at all different studios and then stumbled into, and that was also when I met you. Yeah, you were actually my trainer. I was your trainer. Actually, we were in a, a, a mommy and me class together and I was like, she's fun and motivating. How about I loved to train me. that we would go on hikes together and we did a lot of counseling and that's sort of where it evolved into more of like a mm -hmm. walk talk therapy, working with women in groups outside on the mountains, on the trails. And that's when I also realized I love working with women outside beyond just four walls. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, I, started, I was at that time also working towards my MFT, getting my 5,000 hours in California, but did a little bit of a pivot, realizing I didn't want to get licensed, um, have my master's. And, and then from there, I was introduced to Beauty Counter. Well, and you were working at Red Tri School before then. So you were kind of a sales guru prior to... Well, Plum District. You're oh, right. Plum I was District. doing, I was actually doing um, content research for different oh, okay. people. So before blogging was a blog, what, yeah, exactly. you didn't even know what it was. I was actually doing, I was one of, and, and now that I look back on it, I was like, that was a perfect fit for me without even knowing, yeah. but I was the health and wellness content curator for mm -hmm. different blogs. Right. Perfect. So, um, and that was super fun. I love that. Cause I do, I spend so much time, maybe like some of you, but I spend so much time trying to find, um, and research and I get excited about what's next in wellness and researching mm -hmm. that. So yeah. And then I stumbled into beauty counter and I loved the mission behind beauty counter. What is beauty love counter? Because not everybody knows. I mean, we assume sure. people know, but frankly, no. I meet so many people who know nothing about it. So I mean, look how beautiful we are. It's got to be something amazing. It's, 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 I think it's amazing, but it's a clean it beauty brand and it's based in Los Angeles. Um, and they have a whole product assortment for everyone in the family and also including makeup. So, um, body care, skin care, makeup, and the whole mission is to get safer products into everyone's hands. Beyond that, I have really found, cause I'm not a makeup guru at all, at all, but you know what? I really found the fun. Actually, I think you are. Makeup. Well, but Michelle, before you become it, I mean, before beauty counter, I don't think either one of us were, we've never been big, big, big up people anyway, no. but you become it because you're living it. It's, huh? it's, it's almost there. It is. It's like creating art, dude. It is. Yeah. It is. So I love it for so many different reasons. Um, I love sharing tips with moms. That's my passion to help make a mom's life easier. That's always been my own personal mission. So it's fell into that mission as well. Um, moms don't need to, women don't need to look any further than beauty counter for clean beauty and for putting something on their bodies that makes them feel good. But really awesome. the thing about that and you falling into beauty counter that I find super fascinating is, I mean, to go back to the fact that you were my trainer mm -hmm. and that we were having this conversation on a hike and you said I was approached by a, a clean beauty company to be one of the first founding salespeople. And I really recall being like, that's not a good idea. 
a few Weird. people told me it wasn't a good idea. And I was like, I don't think it's a good idea. Uh-huh. And, um, but the reality is, is that the, it was an opportunity. And so, mm-hmm. and you took the opportunity and I look back on that and I say, wow, look what you transformed. Look what you built. Mm-hmm. I mean, you downplay what you do. You have over a thousand salespeople on your team. Well, I like to look at it as, as, you know, close to a thousand women that are like-minded and are partners and together as a community, we help others. Absolutely. Um, and we are a team. Yes. Mm-hmm. I am part of an amazing um, team, community, women supporting women. And that's why another, another reason I love beauty counter and the opportunity behind beauty counter. You're part of a community of supportive people. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, I have to say, I think that was one of the things is that, um, you know, you were kind enough to offer me the opportunity of which Mm -hmm. I said no. And Mm -hmm. then of course changed my mind and said yes, for various reasons. However, I have to say one of the biggest things about being a part of it is mm-hmm. working with amazing women and mm-hmm. brilliant doctors, lawyers, you know, so many different types of women and, and working alongside, honestly, a leader like yourself, mm-hmm. um, who's clearly mapped it out for people that if you want to be successful, you can. Mm-hmm. This is how you do it. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, and you have to break down a lot of barriers, but that's just like anything when you're trying something new and you're trying something out of your comfort zone. And I know we've talked about this a lot. There's going to be fear involved. So, um, and the same goes with beauty counter when you're starting beauty counter and you're starting a new opportunity or starting a new business venture, there's going to be fear along with it, but it's about, again, surrounding yourself with people that are supportive surrounding yourself around people that make you feel good and believe in you then, and hold you accountable, then you can break down those barriers and you can take those next steps and and find that, find that success, whatever it might look like. Yeah. Well, so I'm interested too. in so we know that that's one part of your job, right? Mm -hmm. It's actually a large part. (laughs) However, we know every day that you, one of the main things about you, like you said, is driving women to succeed, driving women to find their purpose. And um, obviously another place where we connect. So my question for you is where does the goals coaching component fall in? I can easily answer that and say everywhere. <laughs> I mean, working with you all the time, it's mm-hmm. everywhere, ever present. But mm-hmm. tell me for you, what part of that role in your life, like, why is that so important to you? And how does it fall in with everything else? Mm -hmm. I think it really comes down to listening. And that is something that I know that I've been practicing a lot more um, in the past couple of years. Um, But when you're thinking about goals and you're setting yourself up for new goals, something new, and you're working with someone, what we all really need, especially right now, is someone to listen to them, is someone to, and and what goes along with that is also believing in them. Mm-hmm. And it sounds so simple, being able to listen to someone and being able to, and, and being able to believe in someone, but it isn't, it, it, it isn't always that easy, right? To find someone that is going to do both or to be vulnerable. Absolutely. And to ask for that help and to believe that they're, believe in yourself, first of all, but then to put yourself out there and to ask someone to hold you accountable and to ask someone to hold your hand and to see your vision and to believe in you and to take those steps with you. And that's where I really see myself coming in. And that's the work that I love to do with women is to hold their hand, is to believe in them because I do and to listen to them and to hear them and then to help them paint that picture. So when you work with these women, what percentage of women really see their gifts? Mm, In the beginning, not very many. I mean, I don't know the exact percentage, but not for, or a lot of women will see, have ideas, but then they think, oh, but no one would want to do that. Or, mm-hmm. oh, but no one, you know, someone else is already, already doing that. They get stuck in, and we all do. Hello. I know I have, and I've called upon you when I've been there, we get stuck in the comparison game, right? And our good friend, Instagram, 
doesn't always, <laughs> doesn't always help us there. But so that's where I also think it's so important to have someone like have a goals coach, have an accountability co coach, have someone that is going to like pull you out of there and say, okay, great. I know all those people are doing those things and that's fantastic. But like, let, let's get back to you. Mm -hmm. let's, let's forget about, you know, the Marcy's and the Susie's and the minis, and let's focus back on you and your vision and what you see is your purpose and talk about your gifts. So it's a, it's that whole process. Well, that goes I, think, I think the thing is, is that also, um, when they work with someone like yourself, you're able to shine a light on things that maybe they don't see within themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that's a gift of yours. It's something that you're really good at. Mm -hmm. um, so in talking about the opportunity of working with a goals coach or working, um, you know, in different capacities and things like that, talk to me about an opportunity that you had that you feel that was a, a miss for yourself. Do you feel that there was something in your life? I mean, I know we've read the book, Go For No. We've read the book, Getting To Yes. Um, however, you know, tell me about an opportunity that you feel like you missed and what was the obstacle? Well, this isn't really an opportunity. It's so funny. I, I always think about in the beginning when a missed financial opportunity was, um, when I was, I, you know, it's, I think about this all the time with dry bar. I love dry bar and I love Allie Webb. She's one of my favorite people. And she was telling me about dry bar and I told my husband about it. I was like, you know what, maybe this is something because Allie used to come blow out my hair back in the day. And I was like, you should, we should and think about investing in this dry bar. This was way in the beginning. And my husband said, I don't, I don't know if women really get their hair blown out. <laughs> I'm like, really? Well, so that's, that's more on my husband than on me, I guess, as a missed financial opportunity. Um, just kidding. That is a missed myself. opportunity. I mean, not, I mean, look, at, here's the thing. I know we both believe this. It's that um, we could always go back to opportunities. There's something else around the corner. Yeah. You know? And I don't, well, and I mean, just to answer that more directly, I mean, I am like sitting here racking my brain thinking like, oh, and I'm at, there's no specific opportunity. I would say that I, that I, that I missed. Um, I mean, of course there are, and I don't know. Right. Because then if I hadn't missed him, I'd be there. Does that make sense? Absolutely. But, um, I truly believe in, in timing mm -hmm. and I believe in, when it is God's time for you and, or the universe's time for you, then it will happen. Mm -hmm. And I look back on all the different things that I've done, you know, up to where I am right now, and they all have related to each other. And so I, I feel that sh I always listen to my own body and I listen to what shifts are going on in my own body and what I'm feeling and getting really in touch with that. And I feel more than ever, there's like another opportunity surfacing soon. So Absolutely. I just want to be more in the present moment to think what opportunities are around me now in my life, where I am in my life, because where I am now is different than where I was two days ago. Absolutely. And be open to those and not get stuck in the past on what I may have missed or not done, mm -hmm. but really stay in the present moment and think about, okay, what, how can I keep my eyes wider so that I don't miss what's happening right in front of me? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, being staying present and being present, number one, being a mother of three boys, three girls, any kids, by the way, being married and being able to be present to what is around you is really using the tool of curiosity, coming from the lens and perspective every day that minute to minute, there's stuff around us that you can see if mm -hmm. you take the moment to look, right? Tell me how a woman who, I mean, I know we come from similar perspectives and that another way we attract one another. How is a woman who doesn't have those tools quite yet built in within themselves start to see those things? How do they go about looking for those opportunities? Mm -hmm. And finding like which opportunity is right for them, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, there's so many tools out there. I feel like you can almost get lost in the tools. And that's something that you have to be careful of also. And we've talked about that also, Michelle, consuming versus creating. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Right. And I think that if, and it's also, do you want it to be revenue generating? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we covered a lot in our time together. Yes, right. Probably yeah, more than, you know, I have to say, like, this is a good example of a friend where our worlds do co collide quite a bit, especially when you lived in LA. But we 
we're not hanging out with each other all the time, but really we sought each other out because we saw a lot in one another. That's right. But so going back to your initial question, I think, um, so first of all, just being careful of how much you are consuming and how much you're look, like looking to, to learn and to educate yourself about, about your, your purpose um, or finding what you want your, what your next opportunity might be going into that next phase in your life. But I, I mean, I, I'm a huge believer and I know, you know, this, I'm a huge believer in coaching, mm -hmm. working Absolutely. with someone, having someone to hold that holds you accountable. And look, that can be a paid coach. That can be a friend that can be a mentor that can be your partner that can be, um, uh, your own calendar. I mean, it can be a lot of different things, but I, I really believe in accountability. Mm -hmm. So, um, finding someone that is going to um, believe in you and listen to you, which is a coach, um, can be in that form of a coach and hold you accountable. I really believe in listening to podcasts. There's a lot of podcasts You're a out, huge here podcaster. out there. Just, what's that? You're a huge podcaster. I am like, I was a huge podcast junkie. And then I'd have to sometimes take a break. Um, just because again, it's that over consuming. And then you realize like, I'm listening to the same thing here. And yet I'm not taking action on what it is that I'm consuming and listening to. So listening and educating and learning, I'm a huge believer in that too. And we were just talking about that, Michelle, just, you know, just recently education. I mean, the gift of, of education and the opportunity to always be learning is all around us. And especially now there are so many ways for you to, you know, whether it's take a course or take a class or go back to school or whatever it might be that's all right here that, you know, right on our computers, right on our phones. So it's, it's taking risks. It's giving something a try. It's all, it's, it's, you're going to have failure. I mean, that's just inevitable. You're going to have, you're going to have times within that situation that you're going, that you're going to fail. And then, but you pick yourself back up again. Um, so it's being open to all of those, to all of those situations that are going to come up. But the first thing is, is just taking that first step forward and talking to someone, someone that you trust, visioning with them. We were just talking about that too, getting a real vision out there, getting crystal clear and having trust in the process. And I think that's it too. I, I think, mean, I think it's interesting that you bring up um, some of those things. It's interesting going back to like where the podcast started and all those things is that if you recall during that time, again, because we come from a place of serving always. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so from that lens, we started those get grounded power hours and they were free one hour um, workshops to help women get grounded, but further get mm -hmm. to their goals. You do some visioning figure out what their value sets are and start to determine their purpose. You can't do all that stuff in an hour, as we know. But I think you bring up a really good point about stepping in, taking the risks and not being afraid. No, by the way, risks, taking risks are scary. Not yeah. easy. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about like those risks, like taking risks and, and what is that? What is, what is the depth of the fear? Like, what is that really at the core that we're trying to reach to help women propel forward? Well, I mean, Michelle, even just using the example that you just said about get grounded. And for people that don't know, Michelle and I, during COVID, right at the beginning of COVID, when COVID first started, was when Michelle and I had just kept talking about a retreat and getting women together. And Michelle said, well, let's just do get grounded on, you know, on, online, we kind of said, decided, okay, let's, let's, let's bring this to, to, you know, to, to zoom. And that was right when everyone started to know what zoom was. <laughs> um, or for those was, of us who've had to use it for a while, we've known. Yeah, we, we knew, we knew, yes. but that was a risk in and of itself. And it may not sound like a big deal, but it was, it was still trying something new, putting yourself out there in a different way, being vulnerable. Um, we I did it. It was also our first time actually working, working together. together in a, in a workshop environment versus other types of environment. So right. there was a lot of like risk there and learning and not knowing how, even pr from a presentation standpoint, mm -hmm. right? Remember? Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and that was, 
or just be vulnerable with each other, right. As a partnership and, um, agreeing to, to work with someone and having someone see different sides of you that you maybe try to keep, you know, separate from that person. Mm -hmm. So my whole point is, is even just taking small, like small risks, like just putting yourself out there in a different way to see how it's going to feel and to see what happens. I mean, that is, that is how anything gets started. You have to take that first step, big or small, um, to get started. So I just use that as a small example, because it was something else that we did together. That was something new, something different, putting ourselves out there in a different way, especially for me, putting myself out there in a different way. And, uh, but we did it and there were so many takeaways and it was so fun. And it was during also such a, a fragile time, which we're still really, we're still in. Um, but right at the beginning of COVID when there was yeah. so much fear, right? I think it was, um, it was really a gift because every month when we did it for nine months in a row, right? Um, I can't believe it. I can't either. I, I actually was just looking back through my Instagram feed at last year. And I was like, oh my God, like, like, I'm just looking at what you're developing in content a year ago versus today where you were like, oh my God, I can't leave the house. I can't do this. I go to the market. I wipe everything off. I mean, the trauma that we all experienced during that time that frankly, I, it's something that I've been thinking about related to stress. My next blog post um, really is how we we're trying to move forward, but yet so much of that stuff is still present. Oh my gosh. I mean, we could have a whole nother conversation around that, right? Just about the trauma around COVID, the fear around COVID, the stress around COVID, what it did to our insides. I mean, I was just sharing with you just how it affected my own nervous system and still feeling that and identifying that. And I think most of our world is, if they're not feeling something, then that's probably a red flag. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you haven't cried yet. I'd want you to call me and we can cry together. Like it's okay to still be feeling all these feelings. Um, so yeah, I think just starting, starting that whole get grounded series together during that time, truly a time of trauma and fear was something really magical that we did together. And yes, it was a risk, but I'm glad that we did it. And it's something that I, I look back on and I, and I, and I was so glad that we were able to offer that to our community. So mm -hmm. that's something too, when you're thinking about an opportunity, it's looking at where your community is and what's needed. I mean, I'm looking at my community now. I live in Boulder, Colorado now. I don't live in Los Angeles anymore. And I feel like our community of women here, like we, we, we need to all come together. We need to come together. We need to hold a space for one another. We need to nurture each other. We need some self-care, even if that's just sitting in a circle, you know, holding hands together, being quiet and meditate together. I just feel like that's needed here. So it's listening to what's needed in your own community, in your own circle. And, and then if you're, if you're ready, like offering it that, getting, getting that out there, seeing what the opportunity is and making it happen. I love that guidance because I, I really feel that honestly so much in doing so little, so much powerful can come forward from that. Meaning mm -hmm. sitting around a circle, holding hands, that connection point is just a beautiful uh, gift to our, our world. I do want to touch a little bit on, and I have a few questions around uh, and being clear that when you work on beauty counter and you get to the level that you're at, uh, uh, is no small feat, as I actually had um, mentioned earlier. It is building a business. So each consultant that comes on board is building their own portfolio, just like you would if you were an investment banker, a hairstylist, mm -hmm. a facialist, mm -hmm. uh, any marketing consultant, on and on and on, coach, you know. So can you talk a little bit about, because you know, I, you've been doing it for seven years, eight years, almost I've been doing it for three years and I know what it took for me to become at the time, a senior director. Mm -hmm. So talk to me a little bit about what part of your personality or other skill sets. Cause you have this one soft skill side as some human resources people may refer to that is more about like the coaching and the the acknowledgement and the growth and all that stuff. But then you have this other side of you, which I think is like the marathoner, 
and other people that is more about the determination and resilience. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about that because it's big mm -hmm. and it's a balance. Well, just managing it. Well, I mean, I, I mean, honestly, and I have no shame in this. I mean, I really, I like sales. So and you're there, looking good at it. Well, there's just, a, there's a piece of me that really, I like to sell. Now, yeah. here's the thing. I don't, I, I, you know, I couldn't go and sell, I don't know, you know, goalie socks. I'm looking at my kid. I have three boys. I think my kids, you know, goalie soccer socks probably wouldn't be very good at that. I'm not very passionate about that. But when I am very, when I'm passionate about something and something speaks to me, I have no problem getting out there and sharing it. I really look at se selling and sharing and trying to better someone's life in some way. And so that's, you know, that's a big, that's a piece of beauty counter that I actually, that I love is the sales side of it and serving my clients, connecting with my clients, talking to my clients about what's working for them, what's not working with them, helping them feel beautiful. Problem solve. Problem solve, feel beautiful. I mean, I love that the first thing that I do in my, in my part of my morning routine is taking care of my skin and taking care of me and looking in the mirror and just um, being grateful for so much, but also just knowing what I'm putting on my skin is clean. And so if I can help other women in that same sense, have their first part of their day feel beautiful, I think that is such a gift, like what a gift that is. So that's the joy in it that I continue to find eight years later is serving women in that way, mm -hmm. serving them something that is good for their bodies, that makes them feel good. And I also have that competitive side in me. So I want to, I, I, I have, I make sales goals for myself every single month and I, um, I also like rewards. So I have a little reward that I dangle at the end of those sales goals that I hold, that I, that I hold for myself. And those, those goals can be like going on an extra long hike with, you know, a good friend, which I'm doing this Friday. So I've got a little more work. That. Um, so we can hold her with you. What's that? I wish I was in Boulder with you. I know I do too. So, you know, so that's, I, there's so many different pieces of beauty counter, like you were saying, but that's one of the pieces like the sales side, I, I really love, and I have no problem with. Well, I think, I think you, you know, so many people think of sales negatively. And I think one of the things like, and again, like as when we first, when I first started doing it and I was like, I'm not a salesperson, I'm a, I'm a marketer, I'm a strategist, I'm <laughs> And okay. now I realize that I am a salesperson. Yeah, you are. And yeah, you could do both. But see, absolutely. But sales is, uh, it is sharing. And I think that that's the thing that you shined a light on for me that I was like, oh, that's, thank you for reframing that for me. Yeah. That's a great way and of it's a relationship, at. right? It's a, yeah. it's a relationship. And so if I have, you know, if I look and I think, oh, okay, I have over 200 clients. I mean, I look at that as an opportunity to be able to build relationships and be a part of that person's life, even if it's in a very small way where I'm talking to them about their, you know, vitamins on their skin and their skin and their cleansers, but it goes, it ends up going beyond that. Right. So oh, it's absolutely. a lot of times working with women that are cleaning out their products because they're sick or they're pregnant or someone in their family has allergies or something that goes along with, they're looking for a solution that is going to help them. And if I can be a small part of that, I mean, what a gift. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you talking about it because, um, I mean, honestly, having known you for as long as we've, we have, I, I never knew the magnitude of your business. I, as you know, and I think when I saw you for the first time standing on that stage as one of 10 people in a room full of 5,000 plus probably, I was blown away. Oh, I was you. like, and cause you're humble. It's one of your beautiful gifts uh, is that humbling part of you that is just so willing to share uh, with all people, but not in a boastful way. And thank you. I mean, I'm not here to like, I mean, I, it was a lot. I mean, it was a lot of work in the beginning. There were a lot of, there, it was, it was a lot of hustle, hustle in the bustle. I'm not going to lie. I got out there. I really did for, you're really for, good for many, many, many years. And I still do. I still, there's that, that passion hasn't changed. I mean, have parts of the opportunity changed and have parts of what I do on a day to day have that, has that changed? Of course. Right. That's, I think with anything, with any opportunity or with any job or position that you have, I mean, things, parenting, everything evolves in different ways, but I'm always very conscious to continue to look for what brings me joy 
Absolutely. within the opportunity, right? Within the position that I'm in, what is it that continues to bring me joy? Because if we lose that piece of it, right, Michelle, like if we lose, if, if we lose sight of the, what truly feeds me and makes me feel good, then, you know, why are we doing it? So Absolutely. if I continue to grow and evolve and my family grows and evolves and we move physically, mentally, emotionally, you know, we, in different ways, I continue to seek out the joy in that opportunity because there, there are so many, it's just all how you spin it. Absolutely. Well, we just have time for a couple more questions. The first of which is, uh, is there anything that you would like to share with the audience in regards to um, opportunities or something that you have coming up that you want to um, reveal to people? Like, I know we talked about, should we do another get grounded, but maybe you have something bigger. I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. Um, I mean, doing another Get Grounded would be so fun. I mean, just to see where we are, because when we were doing Get Grounded a year ago, our world is in a slightly different place. So it would be interesting to come back and to offer that out again. Um, but I am working on my own smaller um, group coaching and individual wellness coaching called okay. Radiance Reset. So it's an opportunity for women, for moms to come together and to just get ready to take their next steps, to really hone in on their purpose and what is fueling them and reconnecting to themselves, especially after the past year or two and everything that has been going on, an opportunity to work with women to really reset and to reignite the radiance within each one of them, because each woman holds so much radiance, mm -hmm. but sometimes we need someone to come and just give us a little nudge. That so should be, that, be that person that gives you that extra nudge to really hone in on your radiance and to help propel you into what is next for you. So, yes, I, I, I agree with you. Each woman has a radiating light that just needs to actually you know, come to the surface and be able to shine. So one of the things that um, I know we also have in common is that we have a uh, very healthy Instagram <laughs> feeds and I'd love for our audience to know where to reach you. And you love uh, DMs and you love to interact with people. And we were just talking today, earlier today, be long before this uh, call about, um, about do we continue to do our videos and are you know I like them do I need to do it and I'm here to tell you that Christine has some of the best videos on Instagram so <laughs> well it's funny I really like doing them I'm gonna be and I think this goes back to being a fitness instructor I you know I was on I, I you're like kind of on you are on stage and I was on stage for 15 years teaching fitness. I have no problem with that. I actually really like being on stage um, as weird as that sounds. But so I think just being on the gram and doing fun videos, and that's really what it is. I don't take myself too seriously. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm a one man show. I'm doing all my own editing. <laughs> I don't even edit. <laughs> I think you'll see like, I, I don't either. But I just like to, I find the fun in simple tips. So if that's your jam and you like to find, you know, simple tips in clean beauty and simple tips in life and being a woman and momming and feeling and doing all those kinds of things. I'm over on Instagram at KG Cali glow. It goes back KG, to California. Cali glow. It goes back to my California days. I still haven't changed it. KG Cali glow. I love it. And yeah, I'd love to, to glow with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So I just have one, uh, last question. Also, where do they reach you via email? Via email. Uh, Christine Gardner. Well, it's on my Instagram, but Christine Gardner 24 at gmail.com. 24 forever. Yeah. That's um, my birthday, November 24th. I'm a Sagittarius. Yeah. Um, I'm an Enneagram seven. Uh, if you do the color coaching or color personality, I'm a yellow. So if that tells you a little bit more about me, that's yeah. me. So sunshiny. Um, <laughs> right. I believers. And that was our other thing during COVID. Oh, yeah. Hashtag bright side believers. We yeah, need shout to out to Nina. Clark. Remember? Bright shout side out to Nina B. Clark. We love you. Um, but I just want to thank you for your time and coming on and sharing your wisdom and always being ever present for women and shining the light on their power. And I know that your new venture that you're going to be starting is going to be just as successful as everything else because you're involved in it. Because you're holding me accountable. 
That's right. <laughs> exactly. And we know I like to hold people accountable. So yes, you do. No, thank you, Michelle, for having me on here with you to have a conversation. I always love it. You feel me and ignite me. And it's just so, so fun to be around you today. I wish I was around you in LA, but hopefully we'll be around each other soon in Austin, Texas. Absolutely. October. We'll have some of our own little workshops there too, which will be so fun. Um, and yeah, thanks for tuning in today and listening and hope to stay connected over on the gram. Send me a message. I'd love to connect. All right. Um, have a great we'll day. See you soon. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in to Opportunity Knocks, our weekly segment on both Spotify and Apple TV. As we know, Opportunity Knocks is a segment where we feature female entrepreneurs every week on how to take, make, create, and evaluate opportunities. Have a great day. Thank you, guys. <laughs>